Hi everybody, it's Andrew Hutchings with you here tonight. Still not a doctor, still never giving medical advice, just consolidating medical information and putting it all into one place along with an opinion if it ever seems like I am giving medical advice. This video is about a myostatin inhibitor because apparently most, like I don't really look into these much, I don't watch a lot of videos on them, I don't read a lot about them, but it seems like people say they don't work and yeah, that was the general thing I noticed like from watching one video, like the person talked as if none of them work. And that is not the case, or at least it's not the case anymore, with a very ingeniously designed myostatin inhibitor. So NASA published a study in August of 2020 in which they uh, used a myostatin inhibitor on mice that they sent to space aboard SpaceX something. So long story short, the myostatin inhibitor induced over 50% muscle growth in just two weeks. Now, was this muscle growth or was it also water retention? I can't say. Later on in the study, they say that when they returned back to Earth and they regained their lost body mass from being in space that it may have been partially water rebound. However, a 50% increase, even if some of that is water, that is massive. And um, to my knowledge, there's no reason to think that myostatin inhibitors would induce water retention. Now, again, I don't know anything about myostatin inhibitors except for this one that's talked about in this paper. So typically when you make a drug to inhibit something, you would block it from being released. Or perhaps you would block the target. Now this was really interesting. Why I really liked this paper is because the inhibitor was created in a creative way. So what they actually did is, you know how drugs bind to receptors, or normal things in your body bind to receptors, your normal endogenous hormones, chemicals, whatever. So they actually engineered myostatin receptors to introduce into the body so that the myostatin, instead of binding to the receptors in your body to, that are supposed to be there and they do their function, the myostatin ends up binding to this artificial receptor which does not induce any changes in the body. Like a fake target for it to hit. Um, so yeah, the myostatin is still in the body, it's still being produced, and it's still binding like it should, but it's binding to the wrong thing. And this myostatin receptor they made, it also binds to activin A, which apparently helps with muscle, I mean, bone density. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not an expert on these myostatin things, but that's pretty remarkable. 50% increase in muscle in two weeks. Um, it was pretty similar to the myostatin knockout mice that were sent to space in the way that they preserved their muscle mass. Um, just reading a little bit, see if there's anything worth telling you guys. So they even, I'm not on this part, but just from memory, they even tried just injecting some of the mice after they returned to Earth. So they lost their muscle and bone mass when in space. And then they returned to Earth and injected them. And I believe that also helped. Hold on one second. So yes, uh, with the bone density on... Okay, so there was a two-week re recovery period once they returned to Earth. Um, they actually continued to lose bone mass after returning to Earth. Um, however, the 
rats that were given the myostatin activin A inhibitor lost much less bone mass after returning to Earth. So yeah, that's pretty much all. There is a myostatin inhibitor that works. It's called ACVR2B slash FC. It is a synthetic receptor. So it's not a typical small molecule drug. It's not even a peptide. It's literally the receptor. And you put it into your body. Well, it's put into the mice's body. You're not supposed to put it into your body. Probably you can't even find it for sale. But yeah, this is cool stuff. Um, but yeah, we don't know these side effects because inhibiting myostatin is not necessarily a all good thing. While it may make your muscles grow huge really fast, your heart's a muscle too. And if it grows too big, the space inside of it, where it should be able to pump blood through, I mean, you know, when you get too big and muscular, it's hard to, like, reach around. Well, imagine if your heart had a hard time, like, it's a little bit different, but yeah. So normally there's space inside the heart, but if muscles grow bigger, that space gets smashed because they're, like, they're squeezing it from all the different sides. Don't really want that. And yeah, you don't know what else is going to happen when you inhibit this myostem, but I mean, that's really amazing. Especially because, um, so yeah, the, um, help bone mass and muscle mass. Oh, so treatment with it. Um, so normally when the rats were in space, their pecs, their tries, their quads, and their gastrocnemius plantaris and soleus muscles went down 8%, 8%, 15%, 14%, 18%, 18%, 18%, 18 um, by the time they got back to Earth. However, when they were given the uh, myostatin receptor, they actually increased while they were in space 39%, 36%, 34%, 26%, and 20%. And oh, sorry, that was after they returned to Earth. They went up that much above their normal weights. Interesting, though, that the, because uh, sometimes when you, the bones, they kept degrading even after they returned to Earth. And that's interesting because sometimes when you turn something on in the body, like a process, you can't turn it off right away. Um, yeah, like you get something going and it goes for a while and it takes, takes a while before the body can shut it off. Now, some things that go on, off, they, no problem, but other things, yeah, they, once you turn them on, it's hard to turn them off. Or once you turn it off, it's hard to turn it on. Kind of like uh, testicles. Once you turn them off, they can be hard to turn back on. I mean, they should come back on, but they don't always for everybody. So it's probably going to be quite some time before you can buy this on the market. But, I mean, people, I mean, they sell peptides. So I don't know why they couldn't be selling this in the near future. We do not know, well, I mean, I guess I'll Google it, ACVR2B, ACVR2B, oh crap, they're already talking about it, Google suggested that I type bodybuilding after it, let's type bodybuilding after it.
nutritionsteroids.com. One vial from China. And uh, one milligram per vial. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the uh, dosage is. Let's see if the paper talks about that. I don't think it did. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it did talk about the dosage. So yeah, that's interesting. I guess I should have Googled it first, but I kind of assumed that because NASA just published this in August that it would not already be being used by bodybuilders. But I was wrong. So I don't know if anyone's really tried this. And I don't know if it works in humans, but it worked really well in those mice. And typically if something works in mice, it often works in humans. I mean, we are different, but there's no real great reason to think that this would only work in mice and not in humans. I highly suggest that you do not take it. I mean, much better idea to go with things that have been around 60 years, tried and true. We know them from the zillion medical studies. People have been dissected after, I mean, Anabolic steroids are a much safer alternative if you got to do something. I'm not recommending you do those either, but versus a uh, synthetic receptor for myostatin, which is an incredibly important hormone to limit muscle growth, I wouldn't screw around with it. Oh, a post from 2018 about it, so I guess it's been around a while. I, it's even a uh, PubMed study from 2013 about it. So they used a different receptor called ACE031 and it only led to like 3-5% to increase in muscle mass after 30 days. Let's see if I can find anything on this ACVR2B. Oh, apparently the ACVR2B is the same as ACE031. And it seems that in humans, it doesn't work that great. Interesting, maybe the dose wasn't high enough, who knows. Oh, it's even on a bodybuilding forum. Let's see what they say. They mentioned the part with the heart. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to read much more. I guess I should have Googled it before I made a video. Um, but I figured NASA just talked about it, so it's pretty new. I mean, it looks like it's... Actually, it looks like it's been around for at least seven years. Oh, it looks like it's been around for 12 years. But there is still limited information about it, that's for sure.
It's, in my opinion, that NASA study is still by far the best study and the largest amount of information we have about it, at least from a quick search, because that's it blows away all the other studies, none of them really... I mean, there is that little human study that could be... that You could argue that that's more important than the NASA rat study, but still rather strange that the NASA rats would have a 50% increase in muscle mass, whereas humans would have a 3 to 5% increase. That really begs the question of, was the dose high enough? And we do not know the dose for the NASA rats. So yeah, um, not as shocking as I thought this video would be. I mean, not that it got me that excited. You can tell I'm not really, like, bouncing off the walls excited about this, but... Yeah, I thought it was newer than it actually is, and I already started recording this video, so it doesn't really matter. I'll still publish it, and if you get this far, you'll find out that it's actually not super new. So yeah, there are working myelostatin inhibitors, at least in mice. Please like and subscribe, and check out my other videos, and uh, check out my Instagram, natural underscore true underscore fitness. And you can hire me for training advice like what you do in the gym for diet advice for supplement advice that's was me uh, pretending to put pills in my mouth and drinking water and for a medical consolidation of information and an opinion uh, for coaching and you can buy my book on tendonitis pretty soon once i publish it and my website is coming soon so please like and subscribe and uh I, I made it pretty evident at the beginning of this video. I don't know much of anything about these myostatin inhibitors. I just found this paper. Typically, I would know, like, I would have at least checked something out on Google a little bit before I made a video, but this it was like, I just happened to find this paper, and I figured, oh, it's a good YouTube video. And, like, I didn't even really bother to look into it because I have zero interest in it. I mean, maybe they could be interested in the future, but for certain things, it's like this, like, you know that it exists, okay, good. Then in the future, if someday it becomes relevant, you know that it exists and you can look into it more. But you don't need to learn everything about everything, and then in the future, if you need it, you'll have it, because you're wasting all your time. You gotta be selective about what you learn all about, and learn how much you need to learn for that to benefit you. So considering that we have the internet and that the information probably isn't going anywhere, I mean, who knows for sure, but be able to like keep an internal library of things. And then if you need to pull up more information about it in the future, then you just do more research. But yes, I admit it. I should have Googled it a little bit before I started making a video about it because yeah, it turns out it's not as new as I assumed. But yeah, like I said, I don't know anything about these um, other stuff I make videos on. I actually know a lot about. Um, so yeah, good night.